brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Welcome back. Tonight we are talking vocal fry and hoarseness. And here with all the answers, Express Care is Dr. Yika Lam. All right, Doc, now our viewers are asking several questions in regards to the voice. Sure. And our first viewer is asking, can you hurt your voice? You can hurt your voice. The most common way is by screaming, uh, or speaking for prolonged periods of time without hydrating. Um, and of course, um, you know, forcing air through your throat, like we were talking about the vocal vocal fry, or doing doing unusual things, singing for very prolonged periods of time. So you hear about the um, famous singers who have to take vocal rest. Mm, okay. Now, what happens when you lose your voice? So different things can happen. Um, your vocal cords can develop polyps, meaning little growths or nodules, little bumps. Um, they can get swollen, they can get torn, they can get ulcers on them from acid coming up or from being abused. They can even be paralyzed if you, um, uh, for example, have a nerve problem that, that affects one of those vocal cords and, and it stops moving. But the bottom line end result of it is that the vocal cords stop moving and then you've lost your voice and, and you can only whisper. All right. Are you able to lose your voice permanently? You can. Unfortunately, it, it has happened to people that they do lose their voice permanently, especially if there is nerve damage. Most of the time when you lose your voice, it's because of a viral illness um, or overuse of the voice, or sometimes severe emotional distress will cause people to actually lose their voice. And the recovery will, will come with time as they, as they calm down. All right, so our next viewer is asking, what are nodules on the voice cords? And you mentioned Right, nodules. so the voice vocal cords should be just nice and smooth. They're kind of a yellowish color. Um, two little bands kind of look like chopsticks right beside each other. That's what they look like. And um, so they should be like that. But so if they're overused or inflamed, they'll be red, there'll be bumps on them, little growths, um, and sometimes even a little polyp, which is like more like a juicy growth on them. Um, they can be f uh, sort of torn looking, yeah. So you would, s you would see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. When you go to the regular doctor and we look in your throat, you cannot see the vocal cords. You can only see the back of the tongue. So the ear, nose, and throat doctor or otolaryngologist will take a camera and look down and, see, and be able to see your vocal cords functioning. They can actually put up on a, cam on a, a video for you so you can observe your own voice. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, um, our next viewer is asking, what is laryngitis? So laryngitis is inflammation of the larynx, meaning the voice box, and specifically of the vocal cords. And that occurs quite commonly with a viral illness. So you hear of people, or you may have experienced it yourself, where you get a mild cold, but you lose your voice. You feel okay. You actually you, you don't really feel that sick, but your voice is not working at all. You can only work, speak in a whisper. And um, that one goes away entirely by itself. All the conditions in which you have hoarseness or um, injury to your, to your voice, they all require you to stop talking and just be quiet and hydrate and allow the, the, the body to recover. Is there medicine or like antibiotics There really is no, antibiotics never work for this. It's completely viral, but um, uh, sometimes in severe cases, we may use steroids, but most of the time it's just a question of resting and hydrating and relaxing the throat muscles. Okay. Now, what is the treatment for laryngitis? I mean, you know, we hear of lozenges and yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah, so, so supporting your overall immune system, getting enough rest, drinking lots of water, sipping on things, why, or using lozenges, so that there's continual little drip of water, uh, a fluid going down and, and moisturizing those vocal cords so that they're, they're soft and, and smooth. Um, otherwise, really not much, just time. Just time. Just time. Right. It usually only takes one or two days to regain your voice, but if you have injured it through screaming or smoking, for that hoarseness to go away, sometimes it actually is permanent for, from smoking, but many times the voice will recover if it's not used and, and, and you, you, you take your time with it. You can actually go to vo voice therapy uh, with a speech therapist to help you learn how to use your voice properly without injuring it. Wow. Now you mentioned earlier um, the the little circle. With yeah, the, the, tracheostomy. the tracheostomy. Yeah. Now, um, and with that throat cancer, um, is there 
I mean, is that can can that be hereditary, or can you just develop that without having smoked? Or you it, know? it's always possible. Not all cancers are caused by smoking, but all of them are aggravated by smoking. So laryngeal cancer is actually um, nasopharyngeal cancer, meaning the nose and the back of the uh, throat cancer is actually really very common here on Guam. Laryngeal cancer is not that common. Again, it is almost always related to cigarette smoking. Um, and, and quite often, you know, if somebody comes with a new complaint of hoarseness, meaning they were fine but now they have hoarseness, we usually will give them a period of time of maybe up to one month to try to recover. But if, if their hoarseness is persisting, it's time to go do some tests, and at which point we'll be doing a chest x-ray to actually look for lung cancer, which can actually also cause hoarseness because it can irritate one of the nerves that supplies the voice. So it's one of the ways that lung cancer can actually present. Okay. Now I know that smoking as well as tobacco chewing, right? Yeah. That, that would, that tobacco would chewing will give you uh, cancer of the mouth and tongue, which is also quite disgusting and really very, very difficult to deal with. So many people here on Guam chew um, betel nut along with, uh, you know, the lime juice and, and uh, tobacco. Uh, that does really injure your gums. If you see a growth on your gum or there's an area that isn't healing and you, somebody that, you are somebody that chews tobacco, you'd want to go get that checked. But that's, that, that's just from the um, chemicals touching your gums. So. All right, anything else you'd like to add, Doc? Um, just conserve your voice, and you can strengthen your voice by uh, improving your physical fitness, meaning um, your, your lung capacity, by um, uh, it's staying generally very healthy. Thank you so much, Doc, for the You're great welcome. insight. All right, so we will be back to wrap up the show when Healthy Living returns. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss.